Good day, good day everyone and once again we are back together. Alright, uh, your uncle's sounding just a little bit tired and uh, the voice is really not at its best. Alright, so if you haven't subscribed, please just make sure you're part of the family. Right, so we are going to look at this question on uh, graphs, okay? Right, so on functions. Right, so they say sketched below are the graphs of k of x, which is ax squared plus bx plus c, and h of x, which is minus 2x plus 4. Right, so they say the graph k has a turning point at negative 1 and 18, and s is the intercept of h and k. Right, so they say to us the, um, the two graphs, right, have got... Uh, uh, H and K are also in uh, also intersect rather at T. All right, now let's have a look at the questions that are asked. They say calculate the coordinates of S, right? Now, if you look at this graph, remember S in this case is the intersection of both the straight line H of X, right, as well as K of X. So in this case, we can just simply take the straight line graph Okay, and say, right, we know that this is where y is equal to zero. So that means in this case, h of x is equal to zero at that point, right? So 5.2.1, right? So h of x is equal to zero, right? Now, remember, h of x is given as 2x, negative 2x plus 4, right? So this is minus 2x plus 4 which is equal to zero. Okay, so that's minus two X is equal to minus four. Okay, divide by negative two, obviously on both sides. And so X will be equal to two. Right, so in this case, it means that the coordinates of S are um, two and zero. All right, so I'm gonna put that on my graph there. Okay, so that we Remember, so that's 2 and 0. Right, so they say determine the equation of k in the form a and um, y is equals to a into x plus p all squared plus q. Now remember, guys, the p value represents the x value of your turning point, right? Now what's the x value of our turning point? It's negative 1. We're given our turning point there. Right, but now you remember for the x value, you always change the sign. Okay, so in this case, the p will be positive one, and then the y value, the uh, q represents the y value of the turning point, and in this case, it will be 18. So let's do that uh, quickly. So for 5.2.2, um, we've got k of x, this will be a into x plus 1 squared plus 18. Now, the thing about it is that we don't have the value of a, right? So we found the value of p, the value of q, but we don't know what the value of a is, right? Now, in order for us to find the value of a, what we're going to do is we're going to substitute a point, another point that we know, and that point, I mean, remember, we just found the point S, which is 2 and 0. So I'm going to do that, right? So I'm going to substitute in the point uh, where X is 2 and Y is 0, right? So let's take K of 2. That's going to be A into where X is 2. Okay, and in this case, we know this will give us zero okay right so let's find out what the value of a is so two plus one that is going to be three three squared is nine so that becomes nine a which is equal to if i take the 18 to the other side it becomes negative 18 and so i'll divide both sides by nine and i get the value of negative two all right so that will be my value in that case all right so that means if I write down the full equation of k of x, it will be minus 2 into x plus 1 squared plus 18. 
All right, so please keep that in mind all the time. All right, so let's... Uh, okay, they actually said we should write it in the form y is equal to. So let's actually adhere to that. All right, let's go to the next portion. Okay, 5.2.3. Right, so they say to us if uh, k of x is negative 2x squared minus 4x plus 16, right, determine the coordinates of t. Now, what happens at t, right? So this is the intersection between the two graphs, right? So the graph of h of x as well as the graph of k of x, okay? Right. Now, uh, let's remember. So k of x is equal to h of x, okay? Right, so we know they said uh, this graph is minus 2x squared uh, plus 4x. Uh, yeah, let's check that. Uh, uh, sorry, minus 4x plus 16. Uh, so that's minus 4x plus 16. And this is equal to, remember our uh, h of x graph, right? It was given as minus 2x plus 4. So this is equal to minus 2x plus 4, which is a straight line graph. All right, so let's uh, try and work this out. So this is minus uh, 2x squared. Right, I'm going to bring the two, uh, negative 2x over. It becomes positive. So that becomes minus 2x. Minus 4x plus 2x will give us a uh, minus 2x. Okay, and the 4 coming over will be 16 minus 4, and that will give us positive 12. Okay, and so this will be equal to 0. All right, we can still divide by negative 2 there, and that gives us x squared uh, plus x, that's minus 6. So if I divide everything by negative 2, that's what I will get. All right. Now, let's see. Um, we're going to factorize. So, that's x and x. That's going to be 3 and 2. Okay. All right. So, that will be positive and negative. Now, we've got x is negative 3 or x is equal to 2. Okay. So, there's that 2 value that we got earlier uh, where they intersect. But in this case, this will not be applicable. Uh, we are looking for this particular value. So our solution is x is equal to negative 3. Now let's find out what the y value is. So you substitute either into k of x or h of x. I'm going to take h of x. Uh, in this case, it's much easier. So that's h of minus 3. Okay, that's going to be minus 2 into negative 3 uh, plus 4. Okay, so... Uh, I get the positive 6 plus 4, which will give us 10. All right. So in this case, it means that uh, the coordinates uh, of t in this case will definitely... Right. Let's put that there. Okay. So our coordinates for t will be negative 3 and 10. Okay. Right. So... Let's go on to the next question, 5.2.4. They say determine the values of x for which k of x will be less than uh, h of x. Now, what are they saying to us? We are looking for where the parabola, right, is below the straight line graph. So where is that on our graph, right? So look at this. The parabola is below the straight line there. But also, after we pass that, um, you know, x-intercept there, the parabola now is below the straight line. Can you see that now? Right? Uh, as the straight line continues, right? So there's your straight line continuing, right? The parabola will always be below. Now, remember, this continues all the way till infinity, Okay, so this will keep continuing and continuing. So that means from negative infinity until we get to that point, which is negative 3, right? 
um, the straight line is above, or let me rather say the parabola is below, uh, in this case, the straight line. Okay, so I will say, all right, so for 5.2.4, okay, a way to write it down is x is an element of Right, negative infinity, we never include negative infinity. Remember, round brackets mean that we are excluding a solution, right, till we get to negative 3. Now, remember, they only said less than, right? What happens at negative 3? At negative 3, it is equal. The two graphs are equal there. So we only want where it is less than. So in this case, that means negative 3 is excluded, okay? And then the other solution will be, right, remember, we said where the straight line graph is above or uh, where the parabola is below, in this case, will be from 2 all the way to infinity, right? So in this case, we will say this is from 2 to infinity, okay? Now, if you want to express it in inequality form, you can simply say x is less than negative 3 or x is greater than 2, okay? Right, so that's our solution over there. Right, let's go on to the next portion of this uh, very interesting question. Right, oh, we repeated that question twice there. All right, so the last portion, 5.2.5, uh, of, of course, we've got the A part first. They say if it is further given, or rather it is further given that K is the graph of g dash x. Now, guys, I want you to please note. So what are they saying to us? Um, if we take this graph, the parabola, to be a derivative, right, of another graph. Now, what would it be a derivative of, right? So for you to get a parabola as the derivative, it means that the graph must be a cubic function. Okay, right. Now, there are several things that we can note there about that uh, cubic function. So, first of all, if this graph becomes g dash x, right, let me just uh, show that there, right, if it becomes a graph of g dash x, so where is g dash x zero, right? Now, I want you guys to think about it, okay? So these two values would represent, in this case, the x-intercepts, isn't it, right? So these are the x-intercepts, g dash x, x is equal to 0. But on the original graph, right, when is the derivative 0? At the turning points. So which means the x-intercept of this graph represents the turning point of the original graph, okay? Right, I want you to please note that. And then secondly, where is the gradient maximum, right? So the maximum value of this graph, right, represents where the gradient is maximum. In this case, that would be the point of inf in, in, in inflection, right? So that would be the point of inflection. So which means the point of inflection of the original graph will be negative 1, okay? Right. So in this case, uh, uh, by the way, uh, what would uh, this value be? Okay, uh, the value, the other x-intercept. Okay, we didn't actually find the other x-intercept. I think if you try to find it, right, remember this represents the axis of symmetry. Um, so if, from, if that's three units going there, that should be three units going there. All right, so that value should be negative four. Okay, right, you can work out the other x-intercept if you want to, okay? But remember, the axis of symmetry always uh, cut the graph into two equal parts, right? So from negative 1 to 2, that's 3 units going to the right, okay? That means it should be another 3 units to the left going into the other x-intercept, right? So now, uh, in this case, it means that if I were to draw the graph, right, uh, of... Uh, of the original uh, g uh, of x, right? Negative 4 it will be my turning point, uh, and 2 will be my turning point, 
a negative one will be my uh, point of inflection, right? Now, what type of graph will it be, right? So uh, remember, so this graph starts from being negative, right? Can you see? Okay, so that tells me it starts as a decreasing function, right? The gradient is negative there. And then it gets a turning point at minus four. Okay, then starts increasing, starts becoming positive, right? Gets another turning point at, um, at two, okay? And the point of inflection, right? Where we've got the maximum gradient, that would be at negative one. All right, so that is what we'll be looking at. Right, now let's answer the question. They say, for which values of x will the graph um, of g be concave up, right? Now, remember I said to you, we're starting with a decreasing function, right? So it will be concave up from the point of inflection. Remember, the point of inflection is where we, um, you know, we start, uh, uh, in this case, um, being concave or rather this is the point that separates the concavity of the graph right so x would be an element of negative one all the way to infinity or you can say uh, for any value of x greater than negative one the graph will be concave up right and then they say sketch the graph of g showing clearly the values of the turning points right and the point of inflection right now let's try and draw that graph so for our b value okay uh, our graph would look something like this okay so we we know we said we'll get a point a turning point at negative four right and another one at two and we know our point of inflection in this case would be negative one. Okay, in fact, let me just bring that two closer. All right. All right, so graph might not be the most accurate, but let's try our absolute best. Right, so we said we've got a decreasing function. Okay, so we don't know whether that... Uh, so we know we've got a turning point there. Okay, and we've got a point of inflection. And we've got another turning point at two. Okay, right. Uh, really not the best of graphs, uh, but in this case, it is what it is, right? Okay, so that's minus four. That's the value for our turning point. And we also have another point, turning point at 2. And at x is equal to 1, that's our point of inflection there. Okay, so that's minus 1. All right, so this is what the graph of g of x would actually look like. Please remember to label your x's, right? Uh, so that's y and that is also x. And so, ladies and gentlemen... That is how the cookie crumbles when it comes to this question. I hope that you really enjoyed it. I'll see you guys again next time. Shop, shop.